Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. We're tying up the Carry Special. It's a great nymph, and where we're starting with is two of these feathers right here. They're called the church window feathers. They're on kind of in between the shoulder and the back feathers on a rooster pheasant, and, you know, there's enough on there to probably tie up a couple dozen. You don't want to get too far into these long ones. You want these little ones. They're going to come off of the pelt looking like this, and then what you're going to do is you're going to strip those feathers off on the bottom, that kind of marabou stuff, and you're going to get yourself what looks like one of these and we're going to use two of those and the first one that we're going to do is we're going to stroke those fibers back this one's going to be the hackle but we're going to stroke those fibers back and then trim things down so we can tie in a cool little white and brown collar so what we're doing is we're just stroking those feathers like that then we'll tie it in by the tip when we are ready so let's get started we've got our hook in the vise we're going to make an underbody of peacock curl again pheasant and peacock curl is a killer combo out there but this one's a little bit different it's not your standard pheasant tail nymph we'll get our thread started thread is six aught black we're on a 12 nymph hook right now and it gives us a good standard canvas to make our creation so let's get things started by getting that thread set. Now, I'm gonna take that first church window feather that we had, and we're gonna strip fibers off one side to form the table and a tail. And I like to have a little bit of white in there. I like that because it adds a little contrast. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it right about there. So we're gonna about three quarters of the way, three quarters of the length of the hook shank for our tail. And we're just gonna tie the nubs in like that. Doesn't make a big difference, but we got a little bit of white there. I'm trying to hang on to that. See there, a little cream in the mix. Just a little spot that folks can key in on, those fish can key in on when they're hungry. So there, we got our tail locked in. We're gonna take two peacock curls and they are going to form our body. So I like to grab two longer ones, easier to control. Take our scissors and trim it off nice and even there. So we got two, two that, have locked, that we can lock in. We're gonna tie that down right here. All the way up, all the way back and up once more right about there about a hook at a hook eye and a half back from our hook eyes position then we're gonna wrap two peacock curls allows you to make it a little thicker put it together a little quicker and it allows you that opportunity to get those little tiny fibers in there to make that great underbody it's dense it's sparkly it's got that iridescence that looks like a damselfly nymph or a little minnow or something that's shimmery under the water i think it's just like we've talked about in the past a pretty killer material for any nymph pattern if it suggests peacock curl, that's a great one to use. And if it doesn't, it's still a great one to substitute for dubbing or yarn or anything else. Get creative with it. Find ways to make it successful in the patterns that you are trying out. There we are. We'll trim off the excess right there. And there we've got our underbody. So the next step, like I said, we had that church window feather that we stroked the fibers up. We want to keep those fibers up and then they kind of stick together a little bit too on their own. So that's what we're looking at right there. I'm gonna trim a little bit of the tip off so it's easier to tie in like that. Let me get that guy out of the way. Some of my under feather. And then you come in right there. And then you can just kind of lock that down. See, a little bit of a tug, even it out with the eye, and then we can come back on it. And that's just gonna help us form our thread head later. Okay, so we've got that. We're gonna take a couple trips around trying to keep the fibers pointing backwards as best we can but if we get a few that kind of switch on us and go the other way that's fine too see how we're starting to build that keep it inside the thread here hopefully yeah there we go and like i said some are going to point forward it's all right we're going to wrap it enough we're going to break them up a little bit give us give them a little flick and they'll kind of separate and then what we'll do is we'll work our thread up through the feather and tie it down like so And so we've got that locked in. We're going to trim the feather there, and we're going to sweep everything back. So some are pointing naturally back, some are forcing back. It gives a kind of a cool texture, uh, kind of a neat hackling look. But in the end, you're going to get that great white collar with a solid finish, making a, a seamless transition into the tail. Build over those feather fibers, and we got a nice little head there. As you can see, we got that cool, see how the fit, they go boom, they come right in. So when it's pulsing through the water, you got a pretty contiguous looking uh, set of feathers there right into the tail. So there our head's built. We're gonna take our whip finisher, go in, take it around a couple, three times and lock it down. And there we are, that's three, up she goes. And there it is, the carry special, solid pheasant fly. 
some great color, some great texture, and some great body materials. Tie a bunch up, get out there and pulse them through the water. Use a sinking line, use a floating line, and I guarantee you're going to catch those trout and bluegills all summer long. Have fun with it. Sub those materials in, but remember that peacock hurl is a killer one for the underbody.